Hey, good morning. It's me, Barry Miller, your CRNA for the day here at Dr. Miami's office. Once again, it is Wednesday, the 13th of March. Wow, can't believe how this month is flying by. All right, so the first case is already on the table. Monitors have been applied. The IV has been inserted. We're getting ready to do a total mommy makeover, and I'm going to show you guys as much as I can. All right, stay tuned. So it's go time, here we go. Got some go juice here. About 160 milligrams propofol, 50 milligrams of lidocaine. So you're gonna feel a warm sensation going up your arm and a funny taste in your mouth, okay? Big deep breaths, big deep breaths. Patient is fully asleep. I'm gonna give her 50 milligrams of Zemuron, a neuromuscular blocking agent. And you guys already know that it's a non-depolarizing agent. All right, so uh, in review, I make this kind of like C formation on the mask. And then over here on the angle of the jaw, I use my other fingers to rotate and pull up, thus providing a really nice patent airway. I don't even have a oral pharyngeal airway and she's very easy to, uh, to ventilate. Just beautiful. That's awesome work, Barry. Thank you, sir. All right, so I want to show you a little hack that I do. If you notice, her lips are really, really cracked and dry. So I take some lubricant that's on my endotracheal tube, and I just put it here on the lips so that uh, we don't, you know, further damage her lips when we go to uh, intubate her. Let's do that now, all right? So, guys, scissoring motion in the corner of the jaw here, subluxing the um, TMJ, and then let the blade slide right down the right gutter. You can see how I do that. And then I'm gonna pull in this direction towards the left foot. You see the epiglottis right there? I'm gonna get my finger out of the way. There's the epiglottis, and I can rotate it up to let you guys see the airway. Amazing, beautiful, beautiful shot. That's what I do, bro, all day. All day, every day. And you can see the tube just going in laterally through Boom. the cords, and she's home. All right, so I wanna show you the condensation in the tube. That's our first clue that we're in. I've got symmetrical chest rise, which you won't be able to appreciate, but let's look up here. Here's our end tidal CO2, the only place in the body where CO2 is manufactured, and we got some. That means we're in the lungs. Boom! Just like that. Boom. All right, so that was the intubation just like that. Look, laryngoscope drop, done. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna start the operation in the prone position. We flipped her over prone using four people. Um, we have this special pillow, that, like jelly kind of stuff here. It's really great. Um, endotracheal tube cut out here, it's coming through there. This is our um, thermistor for our esophageal stethoscope. And um, we have our arms at no greater than 90 degrees and supported well. So everything's looking really, really good here. So we're just a few minutes um, from induction and her vital signs have already settled down into a really nice pattern. I'm really pleased with that. Our ventilatory support is just about where I want it. Gas flows are one in one. That's 50% nitrous, 50% oxygen. And we're at isoforane, um, just under 2%. I'll probably leave her there for a while, see how she rolls. If I need to adjust it, I will. So this is the progression of her vital signs, um, which is pretty remarkable because as you can see here, the opening vital signs, and as you can see where we're at now, we really had very, very little shifting, very little um, movement cardiovascularly. Uh, she's very stable, doing great. I just received a DM that asked a ongoing question that people ask me all the time. So I think I'm gonna share it with you. And they ask this, um, does nitrous have any appreciable difference in your um, nausea and vomiting? Because if you watch my snaps, you'll notice I use nitrous. Now, I know you guys are told the blah, blah, blah in your training about nitrous being a stimulant of um, nausea and vomiting. Clinically, as long as you stay below 50% nitrous, I don't see any change. I mean, I do plastics. We don't want anybody throwing up. 
So um, I believe the key is to keep your patients hydrated, to keep um, your nitrous level below 50%. And of course, you probably also know I use a non-opioid technique. That's been monumental. Okay, just thought I'd share that with you guys. All right, so um, we are at the end yeah. of the case. It's been many, many hours, and um, um, part of the procedure was a tummy tuck. So I have to extubate this lady deeply. The reason I do that, in case you haven't followed me in the past, is that an, a deep extubation is actually pulling out the breathing tube while the patient is still under a relatively deep level of anesthesia. And then I have to just support their breathing and assure that they continue to breathe so that um, they don't cough and, uh, and move and bust stitches um, while they're doing that. Down here, let me open up this valve a little bit. You'll be able to see the bag moving every time she breathes. Okay? Perfect. So why am I showing you that? And um, that way, I am not burning any bridges. All right, so I don't really have anybody that can um, video for me while I do this, but the process is gonna be, um, I'm gonna loosen up the tape that's securing the endotracheal tube now. Then I'll suction the back of the throat and the back of the airway out to make sure there's no spit or um, uh, material like that in there. So when I take the breathing tube out, that stuff doesn't go back down into her um, airway. That could be a problem. So right after the tube comes out, I'll support her airway. She'll start to breathe spontaneously. And then I will start um, backing off on the gases over there that you just saw. Um, and we'll wake her up. Okay, so I did find somebody to uh, video for me. Larissa, thank you very much. I'm going to suction out her old pharyngeal airway. See all that goop there? That stuff could have gone down into her lungs if I didn't take it out. Oh, I love this air on a Grande song. It's perfect for this. All right, so I'm gonna take the air out of the pilot balloon, hook this up to my mask to have it all ready, support her airway. Um, as you can see, I've got my C formation. Airway's in there, she's breathing spontaneously. Come show this over here. There she goes. Notice my hand has not left my arm. I'm not squeezing the bag. That's her breathing on her own. All right, so um, I wanted to say thank you to Larissa for helping me out. Um, one little thing I forgot to tell you and show you is that prior to extubating her, um, she was on 100% oxygen for a good two to three minutes. That way, in case I ran into any kind of difficulties or problems, I'm already at 100% um, pure oxygen, and uh, I'm kind of like hedging my bets, so to speak.